Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to take on a rather oddball pen, one that I haven't seen in years. Uh, quite honestly, to me it's almost a holy grail to find one of these around, uh, but they're there nonetheless. This is the Pen 525 Graphite. I think it's the GS series if I remember the exact uh, designation for the reel. It's made in the U.S., or was made in the U.S., it's been a while now. This one uh, shows a little bit of the rash. It's lost its um, its chrome on both sides of the, the aisle. Uh, it's got a little chirp in the spool, but uh, it's missing a um, free spool release lever, which I was able to get from mysticparts.com, and that's, uh, that's the lever and the uh, free spool nut, so we're going to deal with that. But I picked this one up at a uh, local flea market, kind of like uh, uh, like I said, it's an oddball because you don't just don't see them out there. And uh, these were high-speed reels, 6.2 to 1. They have the uh, an early-on edition of the extended gearing to allow that to uh, to play out. And um, nice narrow frame, great casting reel. This one's got a little chirp in it, so we're going to see what that's about. We're going to take it apart. We'll show you uh, what it's made of. If you have one of these, we'll show you how to maintain it. And uh, most importantly, we're going to get it back fishing uh, with the addition of that uh, piece. So I only paid $15 for this one. Uh, it's, it's a good value. I paid another $7 for the uh, free spool release and that. So we're under $25 is where I am with the reel at the moment. But uh, I still think that's a good value for this particular reel. And um, I'd like to get it casting out there in the surf again. So uh, let's see what... Uh, what we can do to make that happen or if we're going to run into some other problems. Now when I bought this reel it was stuck in free spool as it is now and I wasn't able to test that much of the reel. I mean I could turn it and find out that it wasn't binding but I, I couldn't see beyond that and I had asked if he had a pliers to kind of grab this thing and they didn't so uh, so we kind of left it at that and uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I got it for the price that I did. But um, I want to say this reel is at least 20 years old because I remember early on when I started doing the reel repair that uh, these were for sale and uh, there was uh, enough of them out there that uh, you could get interested in them but you never really did see them very much. So we'll, uh, we'll take it apart now and show you. So you had the, uh, the cap that uh, holds the, uh, the cover for the nut held on by a little retention screw. We have the handle uh, nut, and this one's a little bit different than some of the pens that we've been working on where the pen reel actually has a gear sleeve here and it has a handle screw. Right, I'm going to take this off now. So when you're looking at pen reels, one of the ways to kind of identifying age is when did they move over to the rubber handle, and that's 20, 25 years ago. Also the second one is made in the USA. Uh, most of the pen reels were moved to Chinese production in 2005, uh, so we know it's at least 15 years since that's happened. So uh, just kind of markers along the way of what you're dealing with when you're looking at a pen reel. Okay, so now we've taken the shim off there, so we'll come back and we'll back off the star adjuster. And if we get stuck along the way where this starts spinning, We'll do two things. Well, it didn't start spinning, but we could have done two things with that. The first is we could have done a uh, put the handle back on and pulled it, or we could have gone the um, uh, holding this with with a small wrench. Okay, we have a should be a bearing in there. I'm not going to even touch that at the moment. Uh, what I'm going to do then is just get over to the side plate. Now it looks like four side plate screws. Just checking behind. Some models have a screw that comes in from behind as well. These don't appear to be, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm, I may be a little bit foolish. I'm hoping that these screws turn easily. They do. It's a graphite frame. But uh, if they didn't, what you would want to do at this point is you would want to go and, and soak these with a penetrating oil and let it sit there for a while, maybe an hour, maybe even overnight, just at the risk of breaking one of these off since it is a fairly uh, rare reel. Uh, you would want to make certain that you uh, you got that right. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually laying those screws on my table just to make sure that they're all the same and they're not all the same. 
I just noticed that the ones that come out of the bottom here are narrower and longer than the two that came out of the trim ring. So you want to remember that when you go ahead and uh, put the reel back together. So you can see it here. There's two of the shorter screws and two of the longer screws. And you want to make sure that you have them in the right sequence as you, uh, as you do this. You'll also see I'm wearing a protective glove. I like to keep uh, as much junk off of my hands as I can. And when you open up fishing reels, you never know what's in there in terms of lubricants and the like, so it's not a bad idea to do that. And then uh, I also suggest that you take pictures along the way. Now I'm taking pictures with the video there, but uh, if you get stuck or stumped at some point, uh, you can always go back to the video and, and take a look at where that screw came out, perhaps, if you didn't remember. Okay, we should be able to pull this off now. Mm -hmm, I'm getting a little bit of movement. Let's take this cap off. I don't think that matters, but let's go ahead and take that off anyway. It doesn't. And this one's just kind of tired. Oh, there you go. See? You, take, you never know. You take the trim ring off and you find that you have another small screw anchoring this up top. So, uh, case in point here, do not ever force anything. It's just uh, it's a bad practice to think, okay, it's just been sitting there for several years un unattended to, and I'm just going to go pry it or something. Make sure you exhaust all options. Now, I, one of the things I didn't do here that I also recommend doing is pulling the schematic diagram for the reel. Because that would have told us, that schematic would have told us you got this little screw hiding there. And uh, another, again, another reason why I use a parts bucket, that's a very small screw. And just laying that on your table or your desk, uh, it's easily lost. So if you put that into the parts bucket, you'll have much better success of maintaining that. Okay, we didn't need to take the, <coughs> the cap off there, the adjuster cap, but it's off now, so what? All right, and now I notice that we do have separation of the case. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lift the case straight up. Now, I've had great tips from the viewers out there. I always appreciate them. And uh, one of the tips is... If you don't know what you're doing, this is a bad example because the bag is lousy, put the reel inside the bag and pull it out there so that if something shoots out like a spring or that, at least it's contained to the bag. Great idea. Great idea. Always welcome in those. I'm going to pull this up and take my chances, but, uh, you know, what did I say? Uh, you know, you can be a fool for that. Okay, so what we have is an anti-reverse bearing here, an interesting anti-reverse, so you don't have the typical anti-reverse dog, uh, other than it being what I'll call dirty and tired, it looks like it's fine. We have a massive gear, look at the size of that gear, and it looks like it's stainless as well, and that turns nicely, so it's, it isn't, uh, it doesn't have any lubrication on it, that's all dried out, but that is a massive gear. And uh, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take that off. I'm going to take the gear sleeve off, or ferrule. I'm going to pull the whole assembly up off of that then. We should be able to. There you go. That's a beautiful piece of equipment. And now I know why I probably was looking for one of these all these days. Okay, then we have the yoke assembly. The case is actually going to hold the springs in on this. Pay attention to this. Sometimes you just get trapped in habit. And if you're doing a, for example, a Long Beach or another traditional reel, you would uh, you'd kind of do this in reverse, right? Uh, the springs would go into the, the back uh, or the side plate case, and uh, you'd be looking at it this way. And it's probably real easy just to do that, putting it back in the other way. It's, that doesn't belong that way. And uh, again, just take notes along the way of what you're doing there. Okay, so we're good with that. Here's the jack. This is one of those uh, fun pieces that you just kind of have to play with uh, on reinstall. You're going to be going for this tab in that hole. Just remember that as you go to reinstall. And let's just uh, do a quick cleanup on this. I'm noticing, even though I, I would love to have a glove on my, my working hand, it's just difficult for me to do that and uh, get the quality of touch and the light that I would prefer, but uh, at least I've got one hand protected. I just used the penetrating oil. It's just the Ace Hardware's generic brand of WD-40 kind of, or uh, Liquid Wrench or whatever. 
I'm just cutting some of the uh, the hard grease off the back here, and there wasn't much. Now I'm checking the uh, the spool shaft here. Just want to make uh, spool shaft, the gear shaft. Just want to make sure that the threads are okay. And notice that there's a little bit of uh, uh, dirt in that in the threads. Take a wire brush and just kind of score that. You should be able to knock that out pretty easily. Checking for tightness on that. There's not much wobble going on there. Here's the last two pieces. It's, a, it's got a keyed uh, washer there where it just sits the one way and it's got a felt washer on top of that. And I took that off just to make sure that behind there we're okay in terms of it being clean. You want to check with reels you don't know. You want to check them to make sure that there's no broken line or other things in here. I mean, it's somewhat of a mystery how this piece broke off and why there's no screw in it, right? Even if it broke off as a piece, you would expect to see the lower half of that piece with a screw. So if you don't know what's going on there, make sure you check everything. Do your, do your due diligence there. And then what I'm going to do here, this is a roller bearing, which is the anti-reverse. It's clean. I'm going to take some oil. In this case, I'll take a, a pen oil. You don't need to use pen oil on pen reels and and everybody else's oil on everybody else's reel. Simply use an oil that's designed for fishing reels. And that, uh, that pen reel oil is a good one for that. It's uh, pen precision reels. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on most outdoor sites. You can get it on Bass Pro and uh, eBay and all those types of sites as well as probably Walmart and uh, some of the other retail sites. It's not something that's uh, very proprietary uh, in terms of where they distribute it. They, they let it out there everywhere. Okay, so I just uh, took a little bit of the grease and grime off since it's the first time that trim ring has been off in a while. If you have some uh, stubborn stuff, use a scrubby towel or pad like a kitchen scrubby. That'll help you get some of that uh, dried stuff off. And uh, if that's not good enough, go to a steel wall but don't go crazy with the steel wool. This is a 4-0. That's the finest steel wool, extra fine. Don't go anything beyond that. It just, uh, you risk scratching things and you really don't want to do that. Okay, we got one more thing to take care of before I, uh, I go too far. That is I'm going to put that uh, new part on. I want to make sure that that works and that it's properly lubricated before we go too much further. Now you'll notice, like most of the uh, the parts that are out there with the uh, free spool lever, it, to do it properly winds up where you can't set it because it's past the uh, the ridge of the side plate that's going to hold it. So what you do is you reverse the lever, you turn it until you find a midpoint, just about there where it'll stand all by itself. Then you can reverse the lever and you can put it on properly. So there you go, that's the lever. And now I have a screw that also came along with that. And again, a little bit of a mystery there in terms of why both the lever and the screw were missing, but uh, I wasn't around for that, right? Okay, we put the screw in. And I want to make sure before we go too much more that that trim ring is going to fit. It's got to fit this way because you're going to have to put that little small screw in. So you just want to make sure, yep, we'll be able to get that in after the fact. So you want to make sure that you can do that before you uh, go crazy here. Let's, let's do a, a test on it. The spring is working fine. The eccentric is working fine. Drop of oil behind the eccentric, always a good idea. Just do it a couple of times so it works itself in. That's perfect. Okay, so we've done the, the anti-reverse bearing, we've done the, the lever back, the side plate is clean, we can put that off the side for now. Let's go pay attention to the, the drive gear then. As I mentioned, it's a heavy drive gear. If you feel drive gears, this one's probably about as heavy as it gets. I believe it is stainless steel, it certainly looks that way. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to try and flip it and see if I can get them out in sequence. There you go, I did. Uh, there's one left. But that's the way the stack goes. If not, you could always go back to that schematic if you thought you lost it. So these have got the HT100 drags in it, and they look new. So I, 
Now, I would guess that this reel has not been used much at all, uh, but it's time for service. So we're going to take the HT100s, we're going to take Cal's Universal Drag Grease. I'm going to use this as a tool now. I'm going to grab a little bit of the drag grease, put it on kind of both sides of a little glob. And I'm going to rub it in with my fingers, make sure I got a good coating on that. Then I'm going to grab a paper towel. I'm going to wipe off any excess. The idea with the dry grease is to keep these drag washers uh, lubricated and fresh. Okay, this is the way it stacks out then. It's a traditional stack. You have the fabric washer, then you have a round washer, another fabric washer, and an eared washer, fabric washer, uh, round washer, cap washer, and then one on top of that. So, setting this thing up then, we're going to put this back onto the shaft. I'm going to go do the first of the round washers then. And right now I'm thinking I've got a good deal here between the $15 for price paid and the, uh, the $8 for the, uh, the trip lever and screw. Okay, you're going to repeat this process three times, one for each of the drag washers. Here's your keyed washer now. Now if these washers were uh, tarnished, if they were full of crud, dried grease, all that other sort of stuff, then certainly you would want to get that scrubby pad or the steel wool out, give it a good little cleaning before you put them back in, because any dirt on those things is going to rip up the drag washers over time. Okay, that was the last one of these. I'll go ahead and put that one back in. Now we got one that does have some crud on it. It's the faceplate side. So I'm going to take the steel wall and I'm just going to do it lightly. And that should get the, the junk off of it. And it is. It's working very fine. And somebody called this a machine the other day. Somebody said, you know, I'll sell you the, the reel and the machine. And they thought, you know, that's probably true. It's a, it is a machine. But just like any fine machine, a well-oiled machine, if you will, it needs lubrication and it needs to be cleaned. Dirt is the enemy of machines. So there we go. Okay, so we're done with this now. And uh, as you'll recall now, we had the uh, spool gear assembly. So... One of the things I'll do before I put that spool gear in, I probably should have done it before I loaded the drags, is I'm going to look at the teeth. I kind of did this on the way, but just to make sure everybody knows. Look at the teeth, make sure there's none scarred, none broken, or chipped, or in any other way uh, missing, uh, so that it runs smoothly. And then we can put some grease on there, because this one hasn't been greased in a while. We're going to use Pen Precision Real Grease for this. And you don't have to put it on every tooth in there. Just a few. As it spins around, because the spool gear is a smaller diameter than the, the main gear, you're going to uh, get it spread quickly. So I'm just going to get the old grease off of the yoke. Again, I just... Uh, I was looking for this reel for some time and then I kind of gave up on it just because they just weren't around. And uh, now they're, I found this one. I, I don't even know if I'm going to sell this one. I may just keep it, take it uh, striper and blue fishing this fall, see how it operates, and uh, go from there. Okay, nice healthy uh, dose of the grease on that. Now we can go in and reseat this uh, just as I thought. Okay, so I <laughs> want to put that in first. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. I got ahead of myself with the um, doing the drag service, and I probably should have put that in first, but that's okay. Just take the drags off. If you've got them stacked and everything, all you have to do is align that with the, the hole, and now you can, you can mate that. No harm, no foul. And for those of you following along, you realize that uh, the next thing in is the springs. That's one. And this is why I use that little uh, parts tray there because springs shoot, you can lose them very quickly. And I did it again, didn't I? There's a, 
the jack has to go. Remember, that was the last piece off. It should have been the first piece on. Such is life. Okay, and the jack goes behind the yoke, sits in there like this. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease on those two studs. That's the only part that's going to be touching the yoke when we go to do that. Now what's going to happen here, just in case you're wondering how we go in the free spool, this jack is going to come in, push the yoke like that. That yoke is going to pull off of the stud here, and you can see now the spool is turning freely, but the gears are not moving. If you move that back down, now you'll see everything turns. So that's how your free spool is going to work there. All right, then we're back to setting this uh, together. I'm going to put the, uh, put the gear sleeve in. There's only one way that can go. And we're going to just reset the whole piece. Take that out, it's probably easier to do it that way. have to move that up to the top to be able to get the, the piece to mesh. Then you're going to want to want to work that to make sure that you have it in. There you go. So that's how you set the, the piece. You move it up to the top, you move your jack up to the top, then you just kind of work it with pressure on it till it does it. So right now everything should spin, which you can see we've got the main shaft spinning, and when we pull it off, We've kind of solved the issue there with the um, the free spool with the missing handle. Okay, we can put a little bit of grease onto the shaft since that other little collar just fell off there. Go ahead and put some grease on that. Put this back in. We know we didn't have to put the cap take the cap off to begin with. That's a tensioner cap. The less tension there is, the freer the spool will will ride. The uh, more tension it is, the slower it'll ride. So just Get too much grease on there. So there's a little cap washer. There you go. There's a little cap washer, rubber O-ring on that that you have to make sure is set. Okay, remember this now: two shorter ones, two long ones, and a very small one. So let's go ahead and put the two sides, whoops, let's go put the trim plate on. So in order to put the trim plate on, we need that first small screw. And boy, that is a small screw. I was using a micro screwdriver for that. It's always good on your bench to have a whole array of tools, just so that if you're in a situation like this, you don't have to go far to find one, maybe put your work down, maybe have it become disoriented and then uh, a piece springs here or there and all of a sudden you got trouble because you can't find it. All right, that was the top one. Now we can put the trim ring back on. Remember we tested this before to make sure that we could get it through there. Okay, now we got the trim ring back on. Next actually becomes a nice way to hold it. We have our screwdriver here. We're going to have to go over to the other side. We still have to work on that spool side. And I like these reels. I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I like reels that do not have the level wind feature. I, I grew up learning how to cast for surf casting with these open faced reels as opposed to spinning reels. And uh, I've loved them ever since. It's just, to me, I can throw it as far or further than folks with a spinning reel. And I just think these conventional reels have all of the advantages in the world over the, uh, the spinning reels. Okay, we put this back on now. Got this one back on. We go ahead and put the star adjuster back on. Now, if this is a case where that is turning. Just grab your, your handle, just lightly sit it on there and let it go down accordingly. Go 
can also find a very small wrench, maybe a six millimeter or something to hold it that way. Uh, but the handle's right there, so why not? There was the shim washer. It's actually a collar washer from another uh, jig master. I'm not even sure if it belongs there. But uh, it's there, so I'll go put it back. It should have a little collar washer so that you don't back the adjuster right up into the, uh, the handle. Just cleaning the handle now with the steel wall. You'll find my... Oops. I don't need to put that on yet. I have those two screws yet. Let's go put those in. And that's another beauty of this uh, this parts tray. You don't go far without missing a piece because you're looking in the bucket for the, in this case I was looking for the handle nut, and I saw that I didn't put the two bottom screws in. So there you go. That's one. This is the other. And this side is essentially done. We can put the handle and the handle nut on. Just notice there's a little bit of greening on there. I'll just take that off with the steel wall as well. Now we can put the handle nut on. Tighten down as much by hand as you can. That way you're not at risk of stripping things. These are very easy to cross thread. Again, these happen to be old reels. I don't know what parts are available. I was fortunate that the, uh, the part for the free spool release was available. It's not to say they all are, but I got lucky with that. So uh, be careful because they are hard to get and you might wind up with a parts reel if you can't find the replacement part and it's it's particularly maddening if uh, if you were the one that broke the part it's one thing if you broke the, uh, the part it's another thing if you bought the reel and you knew the part was missing so just be careful okay let's take take a crank at this we're in free spool mode it's running nicely I don't hear that chirp and we're gonna go over this side because we want to deal with the rest of this but right now that's running nicely Oh, that's so much better than it was already. Okay, let's go over to this side then and take care of this spool side. This one may uh, may need that uh, WD-40. I'm noticing greening on these things. That's why that's why you want to be careful with these. There's greening on there. If that was serious enough corrosion, that uh, that could rip right into the uh, make a home in the plate. Not. Uh, just rip off and then you're, you're done. You're done. You have to get a new frame usually. Uh, There's no easy way to drill these out and retap them. Okay, the three of these are out. I'm going to bet there's a little small one up there too. Since they are green, I'm going to hit those with the penetrating oil. Let that work its way in. Pull that side cap. Uh, in this case, there was one, but it's missing. Yep. Such is life, right? Okay, we should be able to pull this off then. Very simple click mechanism, and uh, it's intact. We wanted to get there because of the bearing, so we're going to oil bearings. And pull the spool. Now I imagine there's brake pads that go on these four wings that have been removed. The brake pads will slow and give you uh, uh, tension in this trim ring here. These are missing. Uh, I'm not interested in slowing the spool, so I guess for my usage, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to go back and reorder the brake pads. The other piece that we have here, we have the plastic click ring, and that's all that's on this spool. And then on this side, because we didn't uh, do it on the front end, I'm just going to put a little bit of lubrication onto the shaft, which is going to go through the spool gear here. While you have that out, it's always a nice thing to just come back and and use the steel wool or the scrubby pad or or whatever to clean up that spool. It's easier doing it here than it is on the reel. That's why we didn't do it on the reel before. And I also notice I have a little bit of greening right on the, uh, the plastic part there, so we might as well just hit that while we're at it as well. Okay, just reinstall the spool then. We have a bearing underneath here too. I forgot to mention that one. We have a bearing underneath. 
So we might as well, not might as well, we should <laughs> oil that while we're at it. And oil burns good oil. So let's put that back in. And I imagine the noise I was hearing before was, was one of them. I'm not sure which one. But uh, regardless, it's not a problem now. Okay, and then I'm just lining up the side plate holes. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other one. There is a little bit of junk on there, so let's just use that scrubby pad to get that off before we reinstall. And I would say overall this was a wonderful find and a good value at the uh, price paid, which again, it was $15 for the, the reel and it was another $8 for the parts. So we're just going to put those pieces together. We'll test the clicker, we'll test the, uh, the spin on it, and uh, we'll put this one to bed because it's, uh, it's done. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This again is the Pen 525, I believe it's the GS series, Graphite. Um, nice reel. Nice reel. Like I said, I've had it on my list of ones that uh, if I found, go buy pretty much at any cost. Well, not any cost, but a, a nice cost. To me, this one is always lined up with a Newell. And uh, it has the advantage of being the high speed. So we'll do that one more time. We'll take the take it for a spin here on the free spool. Now this is what I was saying. If you're not happy that that's spin, perhaps spinning a little bit slowly, back this off. And that will enable it to spin faster. Put it in the gear. The drags are tightened down. And the only other thing left then is we have a little bit of rash here. And again, the steel wall might do that. It's, it's chrome, and all you're going to do is get down to brass here. You're, you're not going to be able to, to re-chrome it. And again, uh, you know, uh, this is not a shelf sitter. This isn't something that we're going to try and take to a beauty contest or something. This is going fishing, and uh, I like the, uh, the fact that it's been out there fishing before. All right, so that's it. A beautiful reel, relatively inexpensive. Seems to run like a champ. Can't wait to uh, put some line on it and give it a throw, see how we do in the surf, and uh, how we do with the bigger fish. That uh, main gear there is certainly going to handle that. Okay, so this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I appreciate you for watching. Uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe. Tell your friends about it. We're always trying to increase my subscriber base. And uh, stay tuned as we do more reels like this. Thank you again.